Good Thursday afternoon. It is just about 2 o'clock Central Time. I'm meteorologist Alexa Trischler from WWL Louisiana in New Orleans. I'm here to bring you the latest on Hurricane Helene, which has now been deemed a Category 3 major hurricane. So it has strengthened to a Category 3 per the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. They flew into the storm. The, the hurricane hunters and found that the sustained winds at our 100 are at 120 miles per hour. So sustained winds at 120 gusting at 125. Keep in mind the threshold for a category four storm is 130 miles per hour. So it's getting close to category four strength. So Hurricane Helene now at cat three strength expected to make landfall tonight in Florida's Big Bend as a powerful destructive hurricane. So here is the latest on what's coming our way going into the uh, nighttime hours for the Big Bend of Florida. Still thinking it's going to be making landfall as a powerful cat three, maybe on the cusp uh, of a cat four by this evening. Again, that landfall happening in the big bend of Florida, just south of Tallahassee, Tallahassee, right in the bullseye of this uh, track as it stands right now, and it will be moving northward very quickly. So those very powerful winds and heavy rain will spread inland across Georgia into the overnight through early tomorrow, even towards Atlanta, Georgia, dealing with tropical storm force conditions through early tomorrow, and then eventually Helene will dissipate in the Tennessee Valley early this weekend. Again, no impacts for the New Orleans area. So southeast Louisiana, south Mississippi, we're in the clear. This is not our storm, but Florida and much of the southeast will be dealing with the impacts throughout the rest of today into tomorrow. And Florida is already starting to deal with the outer bands, tropical storm force winds, and some surge already happening for the west coast of Florida as powerful Helene sits in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. This is a look at it on our tropical satellite, that visible imagery. You can see just how major the storm is. I mean, how powerful and how big it is. And the eye clearly defined there, that eye wall closed off, the eye right there here on satellite. So this is a massive storm, a powerful storm, and there's really nothing in the way of it strengthening even more. So some farther, further strengthening is certainly possible with Helene before it makes landfall this evening, again, in the Big Bend of Florida. Those impacts are still going to be pretty catastrophic for some, I would say, right along the Big Bend coastline. So it's now is the time again to get out of get out of Dodge, evacuate, make those last minute preparations. They should have already been done. But if you are scrambling in the Big Bend, South Georgia, now is the time to do it because we're just a few hours away from landfall. Like we've been mentioning, the entire state of Florida under a tropical storm warning or a hurricane warning. The blue is a tropical storm warnings, even Tampa Bay for a hurricane watch in effect for them. The Big Bend of Florida, South Georgia, even extreme southeastern Alabama under hurricane warnings in red. Those hurricane warnings do extend into much of South Georgia all the way up to almost Atlanta, just south of Atlanta in the suburbs dealing with a hurricane warning as the system races northward. Again, those impacts will be spreading inland late tonight and overnight. So those strong winds will continue to push into parts of Georgia tonight and overnight. Check this out. The rest of Georgia and South Carolina under tropical storm warnings and parts of Western North Carolina, the mountainous regions in a tropical storm warning as well, because as the system gets pulled to the north with another upper low, we're talking about those prolonged impacts for the southern Appalachians. Now this is going to be a huge storm surge event. 15 to 20 feet of storm surge possible for the Big Bend of Florida. So from Wakulla County all the way through Taylor County down to Cedar Key, the worst of the surge still expected around 15 to 20 feet of inundation. Tampa Bay still looking at five to eight feet of surge and then farther to the south Fort Myers and southward three to five feet of surge. And like I mentioned, there's already reports and videos coming in of water already on many roadways across the west coast of Florida as Helene makes its way northward. Tropical storm force winds already spreading across the peninsula, the outer bands, the heavy rain already piling in too across parts of the area and the worst of it is not here yet. The worst is coming tonight for the Big Bend and into South Georgia. That's where the strongest winds are expected for the Tallahassee area right along the coast just south of Tallahassee. Again, that Big Bend region and into South Georgia, the Thomasville, Georgia area. This general region will see the worst of the winds, maybe 110 miles per hour or higher. And then northward along I-75 in South and Central Georgia up to Macon, 75 to 110 mile per hour winds possible. 
Now the Atlanta suburbs, the wind speeds will be a little bit lower, but still talking tropical storm force winds for the Atlanta region. Even 60 to 75 mile per hour winds expected just south of Atlanta from Macon, just south of Atlanta. So this is going to be a big wind event that will continue tonight into the overnight through early tomorrow for Georgia. Also, the flooding from the rain is, of course, going to be extreme for South Georgia and the Big Bend of Florida, where the eye makes landfall. But not only that, we'll see extreme flooding for parts of the southern Appalachians. So the Tennessee Valley, the mountainous parts of North Carolina, even North Georgia, getting in on that extreme flooding concern because of the upper level uh, system that's kind of working alongside Helene, just kind of coming together and having its prolonged heavy rain impact that will sit over uh, this part of the country, parts of the southeast through tomorrow. So unfortunately, with the terrain combined with the terrain, of course, to the higher elevations, Landslides, mudslides, certainly possible. So heavy rain will be spreading farther inland across the Tennessee Valley. So this is going to be a big kind of just unfortunate event for so many people across the southeast. So hopefully everyone has those last minute preps in order. They evacuated. They were told to evacuate. And this is just going to be a rough, to say the least, next day. So go get the excuse me, rather getting into the seven day rainfall forecast. Excuse me, four to six inches of rain possible from this system going into the next several hours into the overnight for the Big Bend of Florida and South Georgia. So four to six inches of rain possible. So that is going to be some flooding concerns for sure. And then, like I mentioned in the Tennessee Valley, maybe up to a foot of rain in a few spots for the Tennessee Valley for the mountainous terrain of the Southern Appalachians, anywhere from eight to 12 inches of rain. So that's going to be a big rain for much of the southeast going into the rest of today into tomorrow. And then again, like today, we mentioned as the system continues to move to the north, we're talking about severe weather risk with this. The isolated tornado risk is a little bit more pronounced for the Carolinas off the coast of the Carolinas coastal Georgia, even parts of North Carolina. That's where the tornado risk is highest today through early tomorrow. So we'll get those quick spin up tornadoes in this region as Helene continues to push northward. Even the peninsula, parts of the Big Bend under a slight risk of severe weather, meaning the tropical tornadoes, the quick spin up tornadoes just adds insult to injury. Not only do we have the rain, the wind and the surge, but also the tropical tornado threat will be across the southeast, particularly off the southeast coast, Georgia and the Carolinas for the rest of today into tomorrow. So we've got Helene, which is now a category three major hurricane and possibly seeing uh, further strengthening the rest of today with that landfall expected this evening in Florida's Big Bend. We've got Tropical Storm Isaac, which did develop in the northern Atlantic Basin. That's actually headed east. It's not going to bring any impacts to the United States. It looks like it will not bring any impacts to anybody. So we've got Isaac formed out there. Invest 98, which is another area with uh, high tropical development chances out in the main development region. It looks like it will be staying out in the open Atlantic. Also, just being highlighted by the National Hurricane Center from their latest update, we've got a low chance of tropical development in the Western Caribbean, so something that will take a while to come together. We'll be watching what happens next in the Southern Caribbean, but really all eyes are on Major Hurricane Helene which is now sitting at 120 mile per hour sustained wind strength. So for the New Orleans area, like I mentioned, no impacts for us in southeastern Louisiana and South Mississippi. Here's the upper pattern that will help pull Helene into uh, into it and get absorbed by it, which was known as the Fujiwara effect, I'm sure. A lot of people paying attention online have seen that it's when two systems kind of orbit each other and the bigger one usually absorbs and consumes the smaller one in this case. So we've got that upper low that's going to prolong again that rain problem for the Tennessee Valley and parts of the Appalachians through tomorrow. Not only do we have Helene, but we've got this upper low that prolongs that into this uh, Appalachians through tomorrow into early Saturday. And then that pushes off to the east. And throughout the next couple days in the New Orleans area, we really have no worries when it comes to the weather. We're on the back side of Helene. We've got a lot of dry air coming into our region. It is a little bit windy today. That's the only, I guess, indirect impact for the southeast Louisiana, south Mississippi area. It is going to be windy today. And you can see here on our water vapor imagery, kind of perfectly illustrated that upper low in the mid Mississippi Valley and then Helene here uh, that powerful cat three storm getting closer to landfall again this evening. But again, New Orleans not going to have to worry about any impacts from this we will stay breezy today. Here are our current winds sustained around 15 to 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 30 miles per hour at the airport at the lakefront. So this is what we have today. Slide L seeing gusty winds up to 30 miles per hour. So we'll be windy the rest of the day. 
We'll have lots of sunshine and those gusts maybe up to 30 miles per hour, maybe 35 in a few spots, but that's about the extent of it. Getting into today and tomorrow also, since we're on the backside of Helene, we've got that drier air, those lower dew points working in, so it's not going to be as humid today and especially tomorrow. You'll really notice tomorrow is going to feel much more refreshing, a little bit of a fall feel tomorrow, and we stay pretty comfortable all throughout the weekend, so no worries for us across the area. Temperatures tomorrow morning certainly feeling much better. 60s for our morning lows on our Friday, so tomorrow is going to be a really beautiful day from start to finish. Here's our seven day forecast for the New Orleans area for southeast Louisiana and south Mississippi. No rain to worry about going into the rest of the week and the weekend. Lots of sunshine. Temperatures in the mid 80s today, tomorrow. Then we'll get a little warmer this weekend into next week back in the upper 80s, but expect lower humidity to last for the next couple of days. So thanks for tuning in. Of course, we'll be back for the WWL. Louisiana News at 5.